join in. It's going to be a great talk. We're going to learn lots about what's going on in agriculture today, different rights, about the rights that farmers have or should have, and about uh, what all of us, in fact, have, which is common law rights. Uh, and uh, that's what we're going to be talking about. So Steve just going through his PowerPoint. I'll make a few opening comments and then I'll hand over to Steve and then and then I'll make some closing comments and we'll have some questions. And um, so by way of, of introduction to this talk, my name's Scott Kinnear and my background is organics now for the last 21 years as a retailer in Melbourne and I've been involved in different organic industry, organic movement organisations for the last uh, probably 19, 20 years as well. Uh, I was the founding chair of Organic Federation of Australia and I've been on the board of different organic organisations, uh, certification organisations as well. And now I've founded um, an institute, a research institute and a foundation to look at food quality and food safety. And we, we commission research and we have commissioned some GM uh, feeding research. We are very concerned about GMOs and we have a broad remit. We're also looking at nanotechnology in, in food. We're looking at irradiation uh, of foods and, and issues there. And, and there are very real issues there. And we're looking at artificial chemicals which have been used in foods for a long time. And, and by way of passing, there's some very real issues emerging around the use of Roundup, which is the most common herbicide in use in the world today and in use in many home gardens as well. So there is a lot of emerging science uh, and a lack of science around these issues of food safety which are developing from the use of emerging technologies. And one of the reasons why those gaps appear is that uh, science in the public interest has formed partnership with private corporate sector for, uh, science research. And that partnership between government and private sector is focused towards developing uh, commercial outcomes. And that's why you see Monsanto partnering up with CSIRO and other uh, Western Australian government, for example. They have past history of collaboration. And, uh, and that's the way science, unfortunately, has gone. So genuine science in the public interest is what, is what we are on about. Um, we were working with Slater and Gordon, which is uh, the law firm that is, is working with Steve Marsh. Uh, I've worked for them for 10 years and commissioned legal advice on them 10 years ago as to exactly what would happen if an organic farmer uh, was contaminated by GM canola and that's what's happened to Steve and he'll tell you about that. And that legal advice said that the organic farmer has common law rights and uh, he, has, he has a right to farm organically and if he is farmed or if he is harmed then he has the right to uh, you know, if his neighbour has not exercised due care, he has the right to uh, seek to um, get uh, compensation for loss and damage, and that's what this case is about. And if, uh, if it's successful, which we believe it will be, it's going to change the landscape of Australian agriculture as we know it. It's a landmark case anywhere in the world. This is a landmark case that has been watched all over the world. And it's um, very important we take this case now this is the first example of loss of certification. Uh, but if we don't take this case, then by default, we will be accepting contamination. And what do we say to our consumers? That, that's the big question. What do we say to organic consumers and the people who want to eat GM-free foods who are wanting to avoid uh, dangers that may be related to GM foods? And, and I personally believe that they are causing harm and the, the evidence to date moving forward is showing the GM foods are causing harm, and that's something that I'll mention a bit later on in closing comments. Um, I, I want to introduce Steve as an organic farmer, a cogent up in Western Australia, and his wife sees here as well in the audience. Uh, they are and, and they are absolutely salt of the earth farmers. Um, lived his whole life in cogent up, uh, and you know, his neighbour, who you know, I think I can say without any. Um, exaggeration that this has been probably the most difficult decision Steve has ever had to make as a farmer um, to litigate against his neighbour. It is a horrendous thing to do and, and uh, as Organic Federation Chair 10 years ago I pointed out in submission after submission after submission to federal state governments uh, to the Gene Technology Grains Committee that, that developed the protocols where we said common law 
is not the place to resolve these issues. It should be resolved in the drafting of the legislation. And you know, just one example is that the protocols were developed with five metre buffer zones. Now, I don't think anyone here um, would misunderstand how five metre buffer zones are not going to protect or stop biological material crossing five metres. Wind, bees, birds, I mean, it's just impossible. And in this instance, the canola has moved, I, I don't know how far, but a very long way. And, uh, and that's the reality, it will move. And there's research that shows that canola pollen, uh, research uh, which um, uh, was done in Western Australia many years ago, showed canola pollen or, or pollen transfer in canola uh, moving many kilometres. And that research is well published, well understood. Canola pollen will go that far. So five metres is not going to contain this. Um, Steve, over to you to give us give us a briefing on uh, on what's happened on your farm and why you're taking this step. And I guess if you could give him a big warm welcome because it's been an amazing journey for him. And I take my hat off to him. I've got to know him now over the last six or seven months, first on the phone and then in person. And uh, I really do bow down to what he's doing. He's putting his life on hold. It's taking a huge toll on his farm. And um, it's putting his assets on the line. It's, it, for us, he's doing this for us. This is not about Steve Marsh. It's about our rights to eat GM-free foods. It's about farmers' rights, like Steve, everywhere in this country to grow GM-free. So, Steve, please say some words and uh, give him a Thank very you. warm welcome. Thank, Thank you very much. Is your mic on? Yep. Give me all right.